everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and uh, this week we're going to talk about skeletons uh, and so recently uh, I know Hooves of Doom had gotten an airbrush and he'd asked me a question about you know painting skeletons with an airbrush and one of the things I mentioned is that there's actually a couple ways to do it so I thought uh, you know why not do a little demo of it because it's actually rather simple and there's as I mentioned there's a couple different paths we could take so here I've got two skeletons. Now the first I just primed completely brown. You can see there he's primed sort of a leather brown. Okay, so that's that's our step one. I did that off camera because nothing exciting about that. I just primed him all over brown. No big deal. Okay, this guy I primed in a bone color and you can see the uh, bow here is actually the original color I primed him in. And then I just washed him all over with some seraphim sepia to sort of pick out the ridges and in between the the uh, ribs and stuff like that, right, in the face, so to get that. Now, ironically, the next step from here is going to be the same pretty much no matter which way we go, okay? So our what we're going to do from this point is we're now going to basically use our old zenithal highlighting trick to give these guys some color bring them back up to skeletons okay and in this case both these skeletons are rather simple but uh, you know they don't have a lot of stuff on them but you can see how more or less once you get done with this step it's just a matter of picking out a few details the three colors i'm going to use here is model air sand which is like a sort of very creamy bone color uh model air aged white one of my favorite colors in the world um, because it's a very warm white it's close but it, and it looks almost white until you see it next to real white, which is just game air dead white. So those are the three colors we're going to use. We're going to start with our sand. Um, now, Model Air makes a lot of different sand colors. So if you're going to pick these up, um, they make a U.S. sand and like an Iraqi sand and a, a, just a regular sand. They make a bunch of them. Obviously, because the line is also done for, for more traditional historical games and war games. So this is just sand ivory. Okay, so, all right. So we've got a little down in there. You can see not much, because it's not gonna take a lot. Just cover the tip up, give it a good mix. I had put some thinner in there first, as always. We're gonna get a little test, make sure we got some good flow. Looks good. Okay, so we got some good flow going, so let's set him to the side. I'm gonna set the, that guy to the side. We're going to go with our brown skeleton first. Now, same tactics are going to apply here. We're going to, at a roughly 45 degree angle, you can see I'm not going hard on the trigger here. Right? We're just going to kind of work it on. We don't need to coat it all at once. But at a roughly 45 degree angle, I'm just going to lay over with the bone. Now, what I'm going to do is up at the tops of the bone, like when I'm actually over the bone itself, like these long, thin bones, I'm going to pull the rock the trigger back just a little more over his hand, right? Over his hand over here, over his face. I want to make sure I get a nice coat. The key is I'm always at this angle, so that that way I preserve some of that color underneath. So you can see if I turn him like that, see if I can get that angle, he still looks very brown. Whoa. Skeleton down. But if I turn him like that, he looks very white. So there's just the zenithal sort of, you know, in action, right? And when you whole look at him straight on, you can still see the color variation there. Okay, so let's set him to the side. That's kind of option one. You want to just kind of work it around until you're happy with the amount of uh, sand color you've got on there. There we go. Okay. So we'll call that one good. Now with this guy, it's going to be the same tactic, right? At that angle, we're going to just spray over here. Now the majority of what we're actually doing here is just removing the, the wash from the actual bones. 
like the the flat piece is the bone right here like the top of the skull and things like that we don't want to fill any cracks right because we we washed them that was the whole idea of it so we're going with light touches we're not shooting out a lot of paint we're keeping it very light touch and there we go okay all right so let's sit them next to each other very quick here Notice how much darker this guy is. He looked pretty white when I hold him right there, right? Then I bring this guy in, and you're like, oh my god, he looks totally brown. It's a good lesson here, okay? Which is, colors change what they look like based on what's next to them. There's going to be a hobby cheating later about choosing adjacent colors and how that affects everything. But this is a good sort of example of it, okay? So looking at these two next to each other, I think what I need to do is put a little bit more on it. That's what I've decided. We're going to go a little bit stronger on him. But I'm going to shoot it at a little bit higher angle just to make sure I really leave those cracks and that underside still brown. Okay, there we go. So now, both of our skeletons are good to go there. And you can see at this point, they look pretty similar. One has a, a sort of richer tone, in my opinion. I think this guy has a little bit of a richer tone to him. And now I'm just going to get rid of the rest of the ivory or the sand sorry from my sand ivory whatever it is from my brush i'm going to blow through some cleaner through my brush here very quick standard stuff just put in the cleaner hold the tip rock it back get that to bubble up inside we're going to dump out the rest of that and we're good to go okay so our next step is going to be putting on our aged white Okay. And this is going to be our 90% uh, or our, sorry, our 90 degree angle uh, highlight. So we're going to go from straight down here more or less. Okay, So I've just put in again like three drops with about an equal amount of thinner because we want this to be fairly thin. We're then just going to go ahead and mix it up in there. You can see that's what we've got. There we go. Blow it through to make sure we got some nice flow. We do. Okay, we'll put him to the side again. We'll start on the brown guy. So now I'm going to go straight at his head, right? 90 degree angle from the top down. I'm going to kind of rotate him just slightly and we'll go off in 90 degrees just so I can get all of him because there's parts of him that might be a little covered up that I still kind of want to highlight, right? Like the bottom of his feet. Might not be able to get perfect angles on that. So we'll rock it over to like 85 degrees or something like that. You know, that's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, 90 degrees. Okay, that's easy. It's just that quick. Next guy, same thing. We want to be careful not to fill in, like with skeletons here, we don't want to fill in this little crack on the back of his head. We want to leave that nice and dark. There you go, same thing. Just nice, quick, 90 degree sprays with this aged white. Now, we set the two next to each other. They're looking pretty similar, right? These guys, they are, uh, they're coming together pretty fast. And that's my point, like, you can still see which is which based on the brown. But they start looking similar fairly quick. I still think this one looks a little richer to me. But in a unit, you wouldn't notice much of a difference. Okay, so, and from above, right, they look very similar. Again, because that's where we put the majority of our paint down. All right, so we get rid of the rest of our, uh, our aged white there, blow that out, clean that out the brush again. You can see how fast I'm doing these paint changes. It's not a lengthy process. Same thing again, we just blow out our cleaner in this case I'm working in a lot of the same colors right like this is just an ivory into a uh, warm white into a pure white so like if a little bit of paint bleeds over into the next one it's not the end of the world if you were going from say like a purple to a white you'd want to spend a little more time in between paint changes run your your cleaner through a couple times 
just because the last thing you want is to put some white paint in there and turn it purple if you're trying to get a nice clean white. So now we're up to our just dead white. Now what we're going to do with this one is since we already were at 90 degrees, you might say, well, what are you going to do? Well, what we're going to do, let's get to make sure we got a good flow. We do. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to just spot highlight some of these places, like the top of his head. So I'm actually pointing there, and I just rock the trigger back real slow. And I do just like the tips of his fingers there, like the top of his leg. Just little points that I think I want to make a little brighter. Okay? Maybe like the front of his chest or front of his face. Doesn't make a huge difference, honestly, in the model. Okay? But it does add a little bit of extra color variation that you can see in person. I'm working in all white. It's hard to come through on the camera. Finally, same thing here. We point at the top of his head. We rock it back. A little down his face. Top of his finger bones, because they're nice and thin and would probably catch some light. You can see how I'm working the angles here to make sure that I don't fill in these dark recesses, right, in his, like, knee bones or hips. So I'm always working the angle to make sure that how I'm shooting is going to leave that angle clean and open and still nice and dark. And there we go. And he's done. That's it. Just that fast. Skeleton done. You got a nice color range from uh, ivory all the way up to, or, you know, from a very sepia color, I should say, really, where you washed or where you base coated, all the way up to dead white. Now, if you don't like uh, having a white on top, like if you don't like your skeletons being very bright, I, I like mine, like, uh, very bleached because I'm a Tomb King skeleton fan, you could always just skip that last step. Or, or go really, really light on the dead white step. But basically, that's it. That's your skeleton ready to go. All you do now is he's got a little gold armband and a bow. And I would just pick those two things out with whatever, probably a gold paint, and whatever your the color of your bow is, which should be a very short process to do that with a brush. No need to bring the airbrush into little detail work like that. I would just move them over to the table, brush paint those, and call it a day. So I will add in some uh, some pictures at the end so you can see what they look like when, when they are all done. And you can see the difference between the two, uh, the brown and the white. And uh, that's pretty much airbrushing a skeleton. So hope you found that informative. Hope that helps. And uh, don't worry, we'll be doing a lot more with both the brush and the airbrush and everything else in hobby cheating uh, as we move on. So thank you very much as always. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.